Matt Donald here, folks. Worst microphone alert, because my microphone I normally use to record this is currently still packed in luggage in my car from a trip I recently went on, and I need to get this out quickly, so the microphone from my webcam it is so very, very professional. And what am I going to do with this worst quality that gives new listeners their first impression of this wonderfully professional and sophisticated show. Well, I want you to subscribe to my Patreon, of course, at patreon.com slash matthewdonald, where we discuss pop culture featuring prehistoric animals, sometimes in flimsy ways, sometimes in ways that are a bit of a stretch. And this month, it's the most wonderful time of year, not Christmas, hell no, not Christmas. It is time for our annual Pacific Rim episode, because the dinosaurs were implied to be kaiju in that universe, and that movie is so god dang awesome that I want to talk about it all the time with everyone every year, and that's what we do, so check that out, as well as uh, another episode about Jurassic World the Game on the phone. Uh, that'll come out soon. It was meant to come out last month, but, you know, pfft, life. Christmas! Holidays! You know, the holiday season. Hard time for everyone. Link is in the description before you can sign up to the Patreon. Thank you for your support, and have a good day! Hey, 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 hey. Roar, growl, snarl, bellow. Welcome to Paleobites, the podcast with a reptile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Matthew Donald. <laughs> Each week, I had a rotating series of guest co-hosts. <laughs> Talk about and rage to use a prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. We're, bu- we're a bunch of 13-year-olds, I swear. And joining me as fellow 13-year-old slash 32-year-old, it's Ben O'Regan. How are you? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm good. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Any dignity this show could have had is just gone at this point. Not like it had any to begin with, but... Dignity lost it is. Did you hear the episode where I start with Welcome to Paleobites? The show so dumb it thinks Triassic is describing someone with three butt cheeks. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> vaguely remember that. <laughs> Such a child. Oh, man. <laughs> Look, there's nothing wrong with that kind of humor, to a point, I guess. <laughs> We're just... I mean, like, even Mozart made fart jokes. Like, so... <laughs> oh, man. Nothing I compare myself to Mozart in any way. <laughs> Except for maybe, I like him, I'll die at 36 or something. <laughs> nah. <laughs> As, anyways, on that lovely note... <laughs> That is life. We shall move on. Uh, and and it's the circle of life. Oh, messing ya. <laughs> well, I was gonna say it's like the way of the dinosaurs. It's just they they're there. They're great, and then they're gone. But speaking of which, oh, I guess this one. Oh no, it is gone. But it's not. It's not like it went extinct. Well, I guess some of it went. It's more like it evolved into us. <laughs> We're talking about. Actually, it didn't. It's an it's a evolutionary dead end of the hominid family tree. Oh, oh well, well, then, never mind. You were correct. Okay, that's right, yes. So, yeah, it did not evolve into us. So this one also went the way of the dinosaurs and went extinct. Uh, it is Paranthropus. Yes, it is the uncle. That's what I remember now. It's the uncle taxa of uh, humans. Hmm. But the, and uh, for those of you that have read Walking with Cavemen or watched it, it does appear on the second episode. Yes. But they so, call it Boise Eye for some reason, which I think is a species name, and they just start using that repetitively. Makes sense, I guess. Uh, sort of this weird. is one I've known about since I was a child, ever since I read one of those 60s or 70s books um, my grandparents had on their shelves that they had, like, um, cave, I, caveman in yeah. it. Because hmm. I, you're, you taught me about this. Hmm. I didn't know about this one before, so. Hmm. Well, I've got a so, fear that you, I can I, say I, on it, even if it's a one in provision. Oh, of course. Well, I'll, I'll, I've know a bit of it. Like, no, I've looked up a bit of it since then. But yeah, I've forgotten about the ancestral thing. But yeah, no, it's like it, it's it's like because I thought it was just it was Australopithecus. I mean, it was like chimpanzee Australopithecus, or I guess chimpanzee ancestor. I guess Australopithecus, <laughs> and then uh, then Homo habilis, <laughs> then Homo erectus, and then us. And yeah. The Homo neanderthalus was a branch off. I suppose. But if you no, want it's a, more a way to look at this in context, and it's not meant to me being super accurate. It's just to give you a rough idea. Is if Australopithecus is a chimpanzee like superficially i mean mm-hmm. since obviously it's not a chimp then paranthropus right. is sometimes called the robust australopithecines 
they're more gorilla like, yes. especially when you look at their skull. That makes sense. That makes sense. Were they bigger then, I guess? Were they. they um, uh, if I recall, I think they're the same, roughly the same size, but they're a bit more barrel chest. And like, I'll send you an image. Like, you look at the skull, that. Because they're. Yeah, I can see the skull right here. I'm on the Wikipedia page, too. Yeah, same here. Um, Basically, they're. That looks like a gorilla skull, doesn't it? Even the it bone does. The it very much does. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, so that's so, pretty intense. <laughs> now, <laughs> the the paranthra pus or paranthra pusines, if that's a thing, I don't think it is. Um, yeah, they lived. They were around for over two million years, from two point nine to one point two million years ago. So, look, that's not quite two million years, but close enough. Right, right, but, and they they did not meet hmm. us, but they came close. Right, like hmm. they. Yes, they Ast- existed at the same time as um, the later species of Australopithecus africanus and Homo habilis and Homo erectus, which is even a plot point of that Walking with Cavemen episode where you see erectus, hab- no, um, you see habil- um no, it might not have been habilis, um, the, uh, no, it was habilis, um, yeah, because Homo erectus, Paranthropus boisei, and one called Homo rudolfensis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then how does this go into, like, the Hobbit ones? Like, like Homo... Uh, what's that yeah. one again? Hom- um, Homo Floritius. Um, the, Floritius, yeah, yeah. believed to be um, an offshoot of Homo erectus or... That makes sense. Because to- Homo erectus is, is Homo sapiens' is direct ancestor, right? Like, it's not um, it's not Homo neanderthalus, right? That's an offshoot. We don't know offshoot. Like directly our direct ancestor, but they're the first hominid species that we know of, or Homo species, rather, that went out... I thought Homo habilis around- was the first one. Um, uh, no, not the first. I don't mean like that. Um, I mean, they're the oh. first that actually really went out of Africa, became as successful as modern oh, man right, 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 is, yeah. in terms of spreading. They were around a lot longer than us, too. Right, and, exactly. Um, they, were, they were around for way longer. Again, because the fossil record's spotty and incomplete, we don't know if it's direct ancestor, but it's a safe bet to say that Erectus was the direct ancestor of us neanderthals the denisovians and a lot of other human groups that are found across this area that are um unless Mm -hmm. there were some other hominid migrations like from cousin species that got left one which could be a case with floritius and some other right um, right. very distant form stuff but um it's gone that's quite complicated like um as the caveman episode show there was um Oh, what were they called there? They show one human species that's um, supposed to be the ancestor of both us and the Andifolds that we split off from. Well, I, I thought that Homo... was Erectus, but is it not Erectus? Homo howdybagensis. Basically, the human family tree is completely chaotic, and you look at it, there's a lot well, of yeah, species, um, because... a lot of diversification, and uh-huh. spinning out. Like, praying for a pot itself shows that, like, this is just my theory here, um, but... yeah. That because when they first arrived, um, they because they were on the savannah or a woodland type area, which is what prompted our revolution to begin with, according to current theories. Is right. There were there were a lot of niches that were well, normally would have been taken by other hominid groups, you know, like well, not hominids, but like you know, primates. Right, right, and right. So, yeah. Paranthropus, due to competition. Again, I've got nothing to back this up about my own theories, and I'm yes. just mostly I'm just spinning this on the fly for content. Fair enough, fair enough. But that they might have been in competition with the other Australopithecines, and so they started focusing more and more on tubers and roots and stuff, you know, fruit and things, and then that selection pressure kicked in, and they kicked off. That's probably also why they went extinct because as things continued to dry out, right? Um, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Up. And knowing human history, um, while the extermination hypothesis for Neanderthals and that where Cro-Magnon killed them is now highly questioned, especially since we right. have the hybrids that have been found, well, well some, and genetic right. evidence of it, um, I do think, at least in the case of Paranthropus, um, the Australopithecines and the early homo, spe- uh, homo species like Habilis and Erectus probably hunted them. That makes sense. Okay. Because okay, they, that would be that, reconstruction that, stones shown them as looking very human. They look like bipedal gorillas. Right. It'd be very interesting to play like a civilization type game. I know there have been a few games like this, but they try to make it too civilized where it's like it's not about mm. it's it's like it's like civilization that you build it's more like yeah. tribes or whatever, but it's on a grid map that's sort of yeah. throughout the world and it's based on different homo species like human species and you're conquering yeah. the, the well, world. Like, and I so used you to don't do build back in the days of the original Age of Empires when I'd use a scenario reader and I'd pretend they were a Paranthropus tribe, so they weren't allowed to oh, eat that's meat. Cool. <laughs> they had to, they could only farm or forage. 
Yeah, like it wouldn't be it wouldn't be like advanced mm. stuff. Obviously, it's not civilization, mm. but it'd be played like civilization. It'd be like turn based, but you'd be gather mm. stuff and like yeah, you. I could see that. There, I know there's a one called Humankind that's kind of like that, but it doesn't it doesn't go? It goes. It starts off. I mean, it doesn't really go into caveman times too Ancestors much. Ancestors of Humankind does. Odyssey. I've got that. I've only played it a bit, but yeah, I know of it. Yeah. There's so. also Dawn of Man, but that deals with Cro Magnons and going from hunter gatherer to early settled stage, like um, mm-hmm. houses and farming and stuff. But then it kind of ends there. I I thought of this. I thought of this one like, crazy idea. Uh, Cause mm-hmm. like it seems like Neanderthals were actually, even though they their technology was a lot more rugged and like earthy, mm-hmm. they were more slightly technologically advanced than we think they might have been. Like they had musical instruments for goodness sakes. Like we yeah, we found stuff the, like the whole cave bear cult thing where they found like evidence of like a juvenile cave bear femur slotted through the skull of an adult or something. Again, that's probably conjecture, but they do seem to have buried their dead um they had a right. slightly bigger brain than us or that might not have been literal that might have translated the fact yeah, that it's they like, a bit shorter what and if they were because of climate yeah what if they were actually hmm. smarter than humans or at least the humans of back then but they just see, died out because they're also too adapted to the ice age so see i've seen a theory like that um he's not a guy that i'd recommend people listening to because he's he's quite partisan so that might not be interesting, oh, gotcha. but i want once i listened to a guy called stick Hicks and hammer on youtube He's uh-huh. on that libertarian side of what the uh, yes. podcast is. <laughs> but ignoring all that, because I'll listen to left and right just when I'm bored and if I want to hear news and then I make right, my own Right, especially if opinion. they're talking about something yeah. non-political that you like. So Yeah, but he did one where he, um, I only remember it because of this, but he basically talked about, um, like, you know how you get like that chariots of the gods type stuff, like Akunaki apparently creating us and all that other crazy crap. Right, right, right. His one was that so the idea of like some of these god-like things are like, elves and dwarves like some of that or actually just different stuff might oh, have I been see. memories of neanderthals where they had a bronze ages or iron ages sort of thing you know not like super advanced but at least something that wouldn't be reached again until the time see that's like what i was thinking what if stuff? instead yeah. of like doing a 10,000 bc style movie hmm. you do a you do instead of 10,000 bc it's like a hundred thousand bc and hmm. the empire rather than being other humans is is neanderthals and they're keeping yeah. homo sapiens as slaves yeah. and they're not actually super advanced they're basically just like yeah they wouldn't be antiquity. they wouldn't be having the mammoths build pyramids but they'd be like more advanced <laughs> than the humans like yeah because mon- going back to this but his idea was i don't know if he seriously believed it or not but he was just i'll just finish what he's saying basically that maybe they had something like that where it's like kind of like where they could have forged metals and stuff and that they their population collapsed and so the reason like due to climate change and so or a famine or something so why they died out and started interbreeding with us was because they were starving but they kept enough of their knowledge that like because let's face it um that we learned a, some of, that we got some of it from them yeah. is what it's basically yeah. saying I yeah, can see that. Uh, but also that, like, some of the myths, like, of gods and, like, demigods and stuff might have come from misremembered knowledge of them, like, because they, while they wouldn't have had anything, like, showing, say, modern tech to a caveman type thing. Right, right, right. It still right. would have been but, beyond anything most of these tr- tribes and clans and bands would have had. So if now, you see them, also, like, d- yeah. making a sword, which is more durable than your stone tools, you're going to think that they might maybe be divine or at least blessed by the spirits or whatever kind of beliefs we had back then i should specify to the listeners since even Mm. though this is primarily a podcast for entertainment it is still a science podcast this is not a Mm. science um hypothesis this is more of a literary one like we don't think they actually were like this as far as we know we have no evidence for it this is just what if Mm. from from like a fun literary standpoint rather than a scientific standpoint advocating atlantis or anything like that for any yeah yeah i just want to make sure that we know that because like i actually don't i think i think what we know of it is pretty pretty solid i don't think there's any conspiracy about like oh they they uh yeah but i think it's just an interesting idea for like a story i think so oh yeah it's just that kind of thing i find interesting. i should just like, clarify that because this is still it, like even though this is an entertainment podcast first and foremost it is still yeah. science a science podcast too so i want to make sure i don't like think if you ever heard me go on about alien conspiracy theories i do not believe them for a, um at all like for a start yeah, yeah. <laughs> saying we'll say i just find them from a pop culture sphere since i'm the oh same here up with X Files, I, I love the I idea of like it, very entertaining because we grew up in the era where outside of stuff like jfk theories and that or, like, <laughs> yeah. or holocaust denial type stuff conspiracy oh theories was so- something that was seen as harmless and you could make yeah remember when conspiracy theories enjoy. used to be fun like it was yeah, just oh bigfoot's like real dude got, like, 
Yeah, not <laughs> like now where you've got like nine eleven troopers or you've got or like, like or like flat earthers or like yeah. or, or like, like COVID you sort can of laugh at, but yeah, but like the whole fake news post truth era type thing. I'm not using yeah Trump that as an that example, part's but scary, but I was like, oh, I remember the days comes with... <laughs> to mind. Hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so it's like I, I just—it's it's just interesting to see the different lineages of different humans, and like this one, yeah, you yeah, said it's exactly. more gorilla-like, and um, mm. males are larger than females, like like astropithic scenes, um, and yeah. it looks like, from what you can gather, they were primarily herbivorous. They weren't as omnivorous yeah. as Australopithecus were. Yeah, they were probably still omnivores, but they definitely do from the wear and tear on their teeth seem to have been heavy chewers, which means unless they were cracking bones on occasion, which they probably did do, they probably wouldn't have given up scavenging because quite a few predators and omnivores will scavenge when they can for the marrow and stuff. Apparently it looks like... They were probably like... chewing nuts and tubers and stuff. Yeah, nuts and like, yeah, like, uh, they prefer soft foods, it looks like. They consume tougher hard foods during leaner times, hmm. and that's when their powerful jaws were used. Also, it looks like it, their diet varies based on the different species. Like... A Paranthropus, Paranthropus robustus was more, like, more an omnivore, uh, but like hmm. the East African Paranthropus boise uh, seems to be largely herbivorous. So yes, and like the, they reading the toolkit bit here, which is pushing on one go. If um, they do seem to have had like an actual tool set, but it, it doesn't seem to have been particularly advanced or particularly innovative. So they, they did have some tools, yeah. They but like it's sort of yeah, like the same as like chimpanzees lot. using tools, like yeah, like yeah. they. They cut vegetation, they dig up termites. Like, I've even seen, like, crows, like, um, hmm. you know, use, like, a stick to, like, lift something out of the water. Hmm. Like, like, Archimedes style. Like, I've seen... Hmm. I've seen that, too. There's even been cases they of... They use water of, um, displacement. <laughs> you know the macaw... Um, the, the, I think they the macaws that you find in, um, over in Japan, yeah. the ones that are yeah. furry, and they, um, they, like, um, they even sit in the volcanic pools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I forget the exact macaques, name of them. You mean? The macaques? Yeah, macaques? Sorry, not macaques. Sorry. I was like, what there's kind of a... bird sits in a volcanic pool in Japan? Yeah, no. Okay. Sorry, I okay. screwed up the name, but there's cases yeah, no, of macaques, like where yes. <laughs> they, were, they were given like potatoes um, in an experiment, like um, in a book that I read called Intelligence and in Animals um, that I got from my grandparents in the 2000s. And mm -hmm. it, um, it dealt with like how they were like given potatoes and stuff, and one of them was shown like discovered like washing it in the water. Um, got all the dirt oh, no, off for sure. and gave it a slightly I... better taste so they um primates in general do have culture and tool use oh no i for sure and also mm. t i've i've, I've mm. mentioned this episode on the show i think several mm. times before because i think this is so funny uh there mm. was this i think i've told this to you i forgot i know i've told it to some other people uh so there was a study in some university where they took a bunch of capuchin monkeys and taught them currency uh mm. they did it like they taught them that these coins that these, these little Gold, plastic plastic but golden coins had value hmm. but like they had to earn them by doing tricks and then later on use it to buy their lunch and yeah. they could use the uh hmm. the coins to like they could save them up to make bigger lunches or like or other sort of stuff but then yeah. on their own because of course one they found that one male capuchin went to a female capuchin and gave her his coin in exchange for sex because yeah. prostitution is the oldest profession <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> There's a similar thing to that where um, it was mainly done as a comedy thing. Um, I can't <laughs> remember the exact clip, but the general gist was like um, they had two chimpanzees, or I think they were mm -hmm. chimps anyway, um, to give her um, like split from each other, and um, they were doing a test like where um, they were both given food. Um, if they pushed a button or something again, I'm just simplifying it because it's a bit fuzzy. Right, but this is the gist of it. Um, and one of them was given good things, and the other one was given crap stuff, like he was either oh, only no. given one, or he might have been given a nut instead of a fruit. And so oh, the no. one that was getting the lesser reward looked at the other one and noticed it, and started throwing a tantrum over it, like he grabbed the Aww. bars and shook it in, like, went, Aah! kind of thing with his mouth, like, you know, the smile yeah, that yeah. chimps give, it's actually them getting aggressive. Yeah, for them it's aggressive, mm. yeah, so, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> They're and smart. They're, speaking they're of so much smarter than we give so, credit for. While um, yeah. there's now a lot of debate and controversy over it, or so I've heard anyway, with Coco the gorilla, where some, oh, yeah. was it some of the true? stuff that she was saying, or it was true, but that um, that the people that were with her were like manipulating what she was for... saying for agendas and stuff or funding. But yeah. she, regardless of that, she is a good example. She could communicate. Yes. Well, and also, did mm. you hear, so this whole thing mm. with like uh, AI... Uh, where it's like, is it legal or not to use it or whatever? Or it's yeah. like, and it's like, uh, like, can it be copyrighted? The whole thing with it actually came from this legal sort of definition that was 
put into being because a monkey at one point took someone's phone and then took a selfie with it. <laughs> I remember hearing about that. Peter made a big ass court case about it. Right, because it's like, because it's like, just the Peter was like, oh, the monkey is the legal owner of that photo. When the lawyer said to be like, okay, we need to put in a thing where a a, a clause where it's like, okay, if it, it in order for something to be copyrighted, it needs to have sufficient amount of human labor. And yeah. this this same law has also come into play mm. in a complete different thing. We're talking about AI and other sort of stuff, where why AI art mm. can't be copyrighted. So yeah. another interesting thing of Paranthropus is you know how yes. when people talk about cryptozoology and Bigfoot, Sasquatch, and all the similar ape right, right, things, right, yeah. a common one is for people to go that oh maybe it's Giganticopithecus or something similar, which is a completely different region of the world. But yeah, yeah. My one is and. I don't know that, but it now it's believed that it was a big orangutan not thing, not the giant gorilla thing like it was depicted in Walking with Caveman and early reconstructions. But again, I don't actually believe the animals like these animals exist. I do find like the continued sightings interesting, but I, again, I don't know right, what to right. believe. I think it's probably likely. But if I were to do a cryptozoology speculation on them, or as a, some kind of like speculative biology kind of thing where they did exist, because again, I'm not yeah. saying they do, I would. My thought would be maybe they're actually. Um, a line of relic late surviving Australopithecines or Pramphropocenes, which would explain right, that their could behavior. Because, and... yeah. like, it's it's not like Homo mm. sapiens might not have been the only one to have crossed the Bering Strait, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. How there are uh, a lot of Ice Age holders. So, like, you have the infamous Wrangell Island mammoths, but there were oh, also yes. ones living on the Channel Islands off from California until relatively recently, too, that again probably died from similar causes. Disease, right, exactly. So there's a lot. And Homo sapiens shows up. A lot of late surviving stuff like that for sure. Mm. Uh, but yeah. How um, the fears, uh, they found evidence of them surviving until the thousands years range, like BC. Right. Well, and also, moose mm. are considered megafauna, same as like, mm. uh, like all the other stuff, but they're the last surviving ones. So in a way, a mm. moose is kind of like a prehistoric animal that survived. <laughs> so Actually, on that subject, um, moose are cryptids in New Zealand. Really? Well, they yeah, exist look here. Up the, <laughs> but, look up. No, I mean, we actually had them, intro, like a population, 10 of them were introduced into Fiordland. Oh, really? Um, as, oh, yeah, interesting. As, like, yeah, and um, while they're apparently all dead now, there's constant sightings like track marks, old hair dropping. So interesting. There's probably a population <laughs> of them still down there, um, heavily inbred and probably not moose thriving, but, In New yeah. Zealand, oh, interesting. <laughs> I'll give you a link on that once we're done. Just that is fascinating. Yeah, I would like to know. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, let's write Paranthropus, one out of 65 million, and you need to get hmm. going after that, so let's get that done. Uh, so, so... Sorry about all the speculative stuff we did in this one, people. It just, oh, it's it okay. Like, really I just, as long me. as I want to specify, it's like, yeah. like, some of the stuff, like, yeah, like, it could be fine. Like, a lot of stuff, it, we, this is a science show as well as a comedy hmm. show, so I want to make sure I can distinguish what part yeah. of it is what I actually believe versus what part of it is speculation either from a scientific standpoint or just an artistic standpoint you know mm. so like what'd be good in a story so yeah indeed like i and... don't actually believe that dinosaurs had laser guns even though i wrote megazook obviously i don't yeah. but some people think that i'm do like I i've had some museums try to say like they don't want to sell my books because they're afraid they'll might spread misinformation i'm like it's a fictional book but okay yeah. <laughs> like... it's not like uh, they're not going to have another indominus in where people thought it was a real dinosaur and keep going which to, to be fair is the fault of the people uh, because the movie made it very yeah. clear that that's not a real dinosaur so yeah Anyways, all right, well, I'm going to write Paranthropus uh, 42 million, I think, because I, I think it's neat that we have a extinct mm. version of uh, this. But, mm. yeah, it's a bit scary, though. <laughs> well, mine's obviously going to be 65 because it's obviously an animal that, well, not an animal, sorry, but a species that well, I'm kind of, well, very we're interested animals, in. So, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you get what I mean, though. I don't mean yeah, to yeah. dehumanize them. Not that they were human, but they were close enough. <laughs> They're that kind of gray area, aren't they? Like, yeah. Yeah. So, hey all, Matt Donald here. This is a first for Paleobites where we rambled for such a long ass period of time that I forgot to read the stats <laughs> of the creature in question. So, I have the stats for one Mr. Paranthropus here and ready to go. This is why I save these in my document until the episode is released so that when I catch this editing, I can do this and not have to re-research things, because God forbid I do any additional research 
for this show than I originally intend. All right, Paranthropus. It is a hominid. It is four feet, so it's 1.2 meters tall. It is an omnivore. Time, late Pliocene to mid Pleistocene, 2.6 million to 600,000 years ago. Barely missing modern humans. Location, East Africa. Described in 1938. Pop culture appearances. Walking with cavemen is the only one I could find. Thank you very much, and back to your scheduled programming. Well, that's it for this week. If you want to get a hold of the show, you can follow me on PaleoBitesPodcast at gmail.com, PaleoBitesPod on Twitter, and PaleoBitesPodcast on Instagram. For me personally, it's Matthew Don Creator on Facebook and MatthewDon64 everywhere else. I have a book series on Amazon, Megazoic, available for print and Kindle. And obviously, no parenthesis in that. Uh, why would there be? <laughs> but, and if you want to contact uh, me, just contact me through Matt. Yeah, exactly. I should have said that last time. Like, yeah, just send me a message and I can relay the message you have to him through that, uh, mm. through the email and such. All right, well, that's it for this week. I'll save the end of every sort of Paleo Bites. Uh, do they think it's like, ooh, ooh, like, like gorilla stuff? So like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going rock, 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 smash rock. Now got two rock. Rock, right, two rock. I'm like, the three rock, rock. Now me two rock dinosaur. Like, oh, we got tools, but they're really just bones. We didn't carve them. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, you maniacs, you burned it all up. Damn you. Damn you all to hell. <laughs> Turn to monkey, reject humanity. <laughs> all right, bye.